everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today, I want to talk about ways to measure bacterial growth. If there's really 10 million bacteria living in your test tube, how do you measure them? How do you count them all? Well, one way to do it is plating. You take a bunch of bacteria, you dilute them repeatedly until you get to a very, very high dilution factor, like 10 million, and then you spread them out evenly on petri dishes to produce colonies. Every single bacterium in the original culture forms one colony, so you can count the colonies to count the bacteria. But plating is hard, you have to do all that diluting and diluting, and you have to make all of those plates, and then you have to wait like 12 hours or more for the bacteria to grow into colonies, and everything is the worst. You don't want to wait 12 hours. You need that growth measurement now. Well, I can solve that problem with one simple trick. Here is what a culture of bacteria looks like in LB medium when it's freshly inoculated. And here is what the same culture looks like after shaking it overnight in a 37 degree incubator. The difference is pretty clear, by which I mean that the stationary phase culture is not clear anymore. As bacteria grow, they gradually make the media more and more cloudy. The scientific name for this cloudiness is optical density, and we can use it to get a fast, simple estimate of how many bacteria we have. First, let's take our observation that bacteria are cloudy and turn it into something that we can precisely measure. In physics, optical density is also known as absorbance. It's a way of measuring the amount of light that's transmitted by a given material. If we shine a light across a culture of E. coli, not all of it will pass through. Some of the light will hit the E. coli cells and become scattered. The amount of light scattering depends on two main factors. First, the thickness of the material. Obviously, the longer the light has to travel, the more likely it is to be scattered. But we're not interested really in, in measuring thickness. So instead, we control for it by doing all of our measurements in a cuvette that's exactly one centimeter across. A cuvette, by the way, is just a test tube with clear, flat sides that we can shine a light through. The second factor that determines how much light can get through the sample is the absorbance. We measure the absorbance in the following way. First, we take a blank cuvette with just pure media. We turn on the light and measure how much comes through. This is the baseline measurement of how much light is received by the material. Then, we add the media with the cells, we turn on the light again, and we take a second measurement that represents the light transmitted by the material. The ratio of the light received to the light transmitted is called the transmittance. And the negative logarithm of the transmittance is the absorbance. You should notice that all of this equipment is nothing fancy. All we're doing is measuring how much, how much light comes through the cuvette. The measurement doesn't tell us anything specific about what's blocking the light or what happens to the light that gets blocked. The light could be absorbed by a pigment, either in the cells or in the media, or it could be scattered by the cells, you know, reflecting off their tiny little bodies and away from the detector. Uh, we know from experience that light at a wavelength of around 600 nanometers in the green part of the visible spectrum is easily scattered by particles the size of bacteria. Commonly used bacteria like E. coli don't produce pigments in that part of the spectrum, so our measurement reflects mostly the number of bacteria, not their color. You will often see the wavelength written out as a little subscript when describing the measurement, OD600. Another important thing to keep in mind when you're doing an absorbance measurement is that the readings will only be accurate if at least some of the light gets through the detector. If your absorbance is one or less, it means that 
10% or more of the light is passing through and you get an accurate reading. So let's say I've done my absorbance measurement and I get a reading of 0.3. What does absorbance 0.3 mean? What I really wanted to know was the number of bacteria. Well, unfortunately, you have to calibrate it. The only surefire way to know how many bacteria correspond to an OD of 0.3 is to dilute them the old fashioned way. You have to dilute them and plate them and wait 12 hours and then count the colonies and blah, 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 blah. But the good news is you do it once and you never have to do it again. The other good news is that OD is linear with cell density, meaning that twice the OD means twice the cells. So you can estimate the cell counts over a pretty good range of ODs. The other good news is that for most common bacteria, the relationship between uh, cell counts and OD is already basically known. If you want really precise data, you still have to do the calibration yourself because it has to be your cells and your media and your equipment, etc. But if all you need is an estimate, you can just dig up some numbers from the internet or listen to some guy in a YouTube video. So for E. coli, for example, an OD of one means about 10 to the ninth cells per mil. For a yeast like Saccharomyces cerevisiae, OD one is more like 10 to the eighth cells per mil. Okay, so I hope that clears up optical density. And until next time, stay shiny.